this question, we're given a curve C, and it's got an equation y is the square root of x, add e to the power of 1 subtract 4x, x has to be bigger than uh, or equal to 0. Find the equation for the normal to the curve at this point here. So obviously, we're going to differentiate this to find the gradient of the tangent to the curve at that point, and then proceed to find the equation of the normal. So let's write out this equation here. So what we've got for part A, we've got that y is equal to the square root of x, which I'm going to write straight away in index form, x to the power of a half, add e to the power of 1 subtract 4x. And we're going to differentiate this, so dy by dx. So uh, differentiate x to the half, bring down the half, x to the power of negative a half, like that. And to differentiate e to the power of f of x, you diff uh, remember if y equals e to some function of x like that, then dy by the x using the chain rule, you differentiate the function of x, the exponent, so it's f dashed x, and you keep e to the f of x exactly preserved. So differentiating 1 subtract 4x would be negative 4 e to the 1 subtract 4x, like that. And we want dy by dx at a particular value, we want it when x is equal to a quarter. So when x is equal to a quarter, so we're going to substitute a quarter in here. So we've got a half, and we've got a quarter to the negative a half, subtract e, 4e to the 1 uh, minus, uh, 1 subtract 4 times a quarter. Now, 4 times a quarter is 1, so 1 subtract 1 is 0, like that. So, um, we can actually do this in our heads, really. This half stays as it is. Now, a quarter to the uh, half normally would be uh, a quarter to the power of half is the square root of a quarter, which is a half, but it's a negative half, so it's 1 over a half, which is 2. So this would end up being 2, and then subtract 4. And so what we'd have is 1 subtract 4, which is negative 3. Now, calculator out at this stage. Let's use the calculator to help us. Let's type in the original function, and let's tell the calculator to differentiate this. So x to the power of a half, add e to the power of 1, subtract 4x, and tell it we want to differentiate and work out the value at a quarter, so 0 0.25. You get the answer negative 3, we got the answer negative 3. I can be really happy that I'm right there. So, um, therefore, state the gradient of the t normal. Therefore, gradient of the normal is going to be this negative reciprocal of, neg of negative 3, which is a third. And therefore, we're going to use the y, subtract y1 is mx, subtract x1, straight line formula. So what we've got is we've got y subtract uh, 3 over 2 equals a third x subtract a quarter. And was it a show that question? It, well, we could just leave our answer like that. There's absolutely no harm in leaving your answer like that. If you wanted to tidy up, you could. You could multiply everything by two firstly. So you would get two y subtract three is two thirds x subtract a quarter. You could then multiply everything by the 3 to get rid of the, the thirds there. So you could have 6y subtract 9 is equal to 2x subtract a quarter. And then you could multiply that out. 6y subtract 9 is going to be 2x subtract a half. Um, you could times everything by 2 if you wanted to get rid of that half. So 12y subtract 18 is going to be equal to 4x subtract 1. And then tidying it up, you could say that 0 is 4x subtract 12y um, add 17 if you really wanted to. You know, need it was fine to leave your answer like that because it wasn't a show that question. Okay, going back to the question, it says that the curve C has a stationary point where x is between a half and one. Show that the uh, that alpha is a solution to this equation. Now, for a stationary point, straight away in your head, you should be thinking dy by dx is equal to zero for stationary points, and state that dy by dx equals zero for stationary points. State that to the examiner. So go back up here, and we've got our dy by dx, which is this thing here. We had already worked that out. So dy by dx, which we've worked out here, we're solving that equals zero. So I'm going to take this here, and I'm solving this thing here equaling zero. Now let's look what they want us to show. They want... Uh, 
x to be the subject of the formula and they want the natural logarithm with a root x in there. So they want um, this here. So actually, let me just take a photograph of what they want here. And I'll keep that so I can keep looking at that as I do the question. So this is what they want. Okay, so how am I going to get uh, from that point to that? Now, to me, it looks like this is what my logic is. This has an x as a subject of the formula. We need to make x a subject of this formula. Um, but it also has x's in the other side. Now, it's got a natural logarithm. For me, that is inviting me to think I want to get the x out of this e to the power of x by taking logarithms. So it's probably that x that I'm making the subject of the formula. So I'm going to try and make that x the subject of the formula. So let's have a go at doing that. First thing I'd do is I'd add uh, 4e to the 1, subtract 4x to both sides. So I'd be a half x to the negative a half would be 4e to the 1, subtract 4x. At that point, I'd divide by this 4. I can't take logs until I've just got e on its own. So I'd have an eighth x to the uh, negative a half is equal to e to the 1, subtract 4x. At this point, I'm thinking I might be able to take uh, logs here. I might be able to take logs. So I'm going to take logs of both sides. One subtract four x. Okay, and for me, this is looking like it's going in a decent direction. Uh, let me just swap sides because I want to. In fact, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Um, I'm going to add 4x to both sides and subtract this limb from both sides. So I'd have 4x is going to be 1 subtract the natural logarithm of an 8x and negative a half, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 4. So x is equal to a quarter, 1 subtract the natural logarithm of an 8x and negative a half, like this. Now, as you can see, I'm very close. I've got the quarter. I've got the 1. Unfortunately, I haven't quite got this logarithm sorted out, but I can do that because what I can do, rewrite this as x is a quarter, one subtract the natural logarithm. I could rewrite this, sorry, as a combined uh, fraction here. So this would be one over eight, the square root of x, like that, yeah? So this is x is a quarter, one subtract the natural logarithm, and I could rewrite that as eight root x, all to the negative 1. And I could bring down the negative 1 power, so x is therefore a quarter, 1, and then bringing down the negative 1 would make this plus, so 1 add the natural logarithm of 8 root x. And looking back up here, uh, that's exactly what I wanted, okay, that's exactly what I wanted to show. Now for part c, we've got to use that as an iterative formula with x0 as 1, and I want to find the values up to x4 to 3 decimal places. So, x n plus 1 is equal to a quarter 1 plus natural logarithm of 8 the square root of x n like that and x 0 is equal to 1 and I want the answers uh, to up to x 4 to 3 decimal places okay so calculator out as normal type in 1 equals so it's stored in the answer function then copy this formula here so you've got a quarter open brackets, 1, add the natural logarithm of 8, the square root of ants, of your answer, close that bracket and close the original bracket, and then press equals. So to three decimal places, it's 0 0.7698, so it'd be 0. Point, um, so I'm going to write that down, hold on, let me just note my work in here, x1 is going to be equal to 0 0.76986. 0 0.76986. So if I rounded that to three decimal places, it would that would end up being uh, a one there. So it'd be 0 0.770. So x1 would be 0 0.770. Press equal to the next one, 0 0.737. That's easy. So x2 is 0 0.737. Press equals again, 0 0.732 for x3. So x3 is 0 0.732, and press equals one more time for x4, 0 0.731. So x4 is 0 0.731.
And looking up here, uh, they wanted up to x4 to three decimal places, and I've done that. Okay, then it says, show that your value of x4 is correct to three decimal places. So what I want to do for the next part, so we're on part um, D. I've got 0 0.731 as my x4. And I want to check the upper bound, which is 0 0.7315. And I want to check the lower bound, which is 0 0.7305. And I want to substitute them into um, the equation that I was trying to solve. Remember, I'm trying to solve... Um, if you look up here, the original thing I'm trying to solve is alpha is a solution of this equation, i.e. alpha is a stationary point. So it's dy by dx is 0. So what was my dy by dx originally? It was this thing here. So I'm going to copy this again. So this is what I want to substitute into. So what I want to do is I want to work out dy by dx when x is equal to 0 0.7305. And I want to work out dy by dx when x is equal to 0 0.7315. Hopefully there's a change of sign, hence there's a stationary point between the two. So calculator out. Type this in here. So you've got a half x to the power of negative a half. Subtract 4. Oh. I'll come out of that, so subtract 4e to the power of 1, subtract 4x, like that. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate that at 0 0.7305, and I get myself this answer, 0 0.00025. So 0 0.00025, and that was a negative, I think. And then I'm going to calculate that when it's 0 0.7315, and I get 0 0.00169, 0 0.00169. And therefore, you can state change of sign, uh, dy of dx, continuous, it's a continuous function, therefore, uh, alpha equals 0 0.731 is a, uh, is the x value of stationary point uh, accurate to three decimal places. Okay, so we're done all the way up to this last part. Another attempt uh, to find alpha is made using this iterative formula. So lastly, let me just take a copy of this one here. Okay, so we've got another attempt to make alpha is found using that. Describe the outcome of this attempt. So all you've got to do is get the calculator out, okay, and you type that in. So 1 over 64, so 1 over 64, and then you go e to the power, so to the power of 8. Oh, actually, what I didn't do is put 1 equals in first, which I was a mistake. So calculator 1 over 64. e to the power of 8 ants subtract 2. So if you press equals, you get 6, equals again, and actually it, it tends to infinity. So um, this iterative formula tends to infinity after uh, three iterations.